Check, check, check. Gather round, gather round. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Are you ready, producer I DJ Big I am so Brown? ready. Are you super ready? Because I am super ready. A lot is going on. A lot happens all the time. Yeah. This is RPT, Red Pilt the Mile. Shout out to everybody tuning in. What episode number is this? That's a good question. I don't have it in front of me. It's all good. We <laughs> damn near at episode 200. How long has this podcast been going on? Uh, it'll be uh, 19 months, I believe. 19 in July. months. A straight lumbre. Straight, yeah. straight facts. Straight fire. Of facts and fire. Months. Yeah. Broadcasting live from the corrupt, crooked, crime infested Harris County. This is Errepete. I'm your host, Chingo Blingo, with the big tamarindo, the ghetto vaquero, the rey de four play, the masa masai, the tamale kingpin, the Versace mariachi. And we have... Producer, DJ, Big Rob. What to do, everybody? You know, when they see that on the uh, YouTube version, they're going to be like, we need those boots again. They're going to they're gonna die, you know, like, if we don't have those boots. You know what's funny, man? Uh, I've been having to call, like, uh, different services. Like, oh, I need, a, I need an appliance guy. Come look at this dishwasher. Something happened. Yeah. Because my wife wanted a farmhouse sink. And when they put in the farmhouse sink, all of a sudden, it's like, well, what happened to the hot water? And it's like, well, shit, I ain't no plumber, but I'm learning a whole bunch of stuff. And it's like, okay, well, now the dishwasher has an error. You know Ooh. what I mean? And anyway, my point is I'm calling, like, the, like, the appliance guy shows up. And, and uh, actually, it was the plumbing people, but they were looking at the appliance. And they're like, huh, so you got this Chingo Bling cup here. What you know about Chingo Bling, dog? And I'm like, what you know about Chingo Bling, fool? He's like, Psh, I used to jam in my high school. Why, what's up? What do you know? And I'm like, Psh, well, I'm him. <laughs> and he's like, where's the boots? I'm like, in storage. So, like, you call in a pool company. They're like, hey, give us your email. So we can uh, schedule da, 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 da. We're backed up. It's summertime. You know, let's see if we can squeeze you in late next week or something. And then you give them the email. They're like, huh, we'll see you tomorrow. Nah, nah, nah. I no, wish. No, you didn't get no VIP treatment? I mean, everybody that I met, everybody that's like, oh, shit, hey, fool, like, do I know you by another name type of thing? Yeah. I mean, all the people... All the people been uh, doing tip-top service, man. Like, um, the you know, uh, obviously, shout out to Bobby at a constructive... Constructive Vents, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, Bobby Flores, uh, they are on Facebook, Constructive ENT. Words are hard. They, they, they okay. were, well, here's why, bro. Words are hard. This is why. Um, he has so much word of mouth cu uh, customers yeah. that he ain't tripping over Instagram and nothing like that. Like, mm. he doesn't have, like, a simple thing. Just be like, hey, just tell them at yada yada mm -hmm. and they can find me he's kind of like well, well, well i don't really fuck with that shit he just says say bobby sent you or, yeah you know, or send bobby yeah. so we announced his phone number on previous episodes but uh but anyway um anyway my point is it's a lot going on we've been moving uh new podcast studios coming in hot hopefully man like early july yeah it's just moving into the house is just oh, oh my god there's just a lot of moving parts were you getting people saying like sh labor shortages is that what you were getting to maybe no not really but um uh, the reason i brought all this up is just how people recognize like they'll see your email they'll be like oh shit or hey you look familiar or, yeah like, what you doing over here um it's like they expect you to show up with the boots and the hat every time you go everywhere yeah and it's like bro it's been 20 years it's been 20 years you know what i mean so this is errepete red piltamales uh, lots to talk about. Uh, people spamming early in the morning. Look at that, man. We're live on Instagram, live on Facebook. Ooh um, if you, uh, shout out to all the members of the Thea, all members of the Thea, that the Mile Intelligence Agency stand back and stand by. If you're not a member of our exclusive Patreon community, hit us up patreon.com forward slash Red Piltamales. Also, shout out to our newest distribution partners rockfin.com forward slash red pill tamales you know now that we're doing this i don't think we've ever done this maybe once or twice like live streamed the show as we're recording it uh -huh, anywhere uh -huh. as we move into the new studio maybe people on facebook and instagram can chime in somewhere in the comments hey go ahead and do this live i'll tune in like i'll make this a part of my schedule in the mornings to tune in you know x amount of days and maybe we'll do that way i mean we want we want to produce so much more content for y'all like uh, Cafecito Time was a daily live stream that we would do during the pandemic because there wasn't shit else to do. You couldn't do shit else. Uh, so we want to bring all that back. But of course, uh, my wife, she's uh, she has all these construction dreams. So our kitchen has been under construction. You do not realize how central to your life your kitchen is until you don't no longer have it. It's and the most important room in the house. Pretty much. Like, yeah. The living room doesn't even come close because we're having to be like, yo, we can't cook like paints drying. Uh, the guys installing, um, las manejeras, what mm -hmm. you call them hoes? The handles. The handles. Yeah. <laughs> My wife wants to go. She wants gold handles. She wanted to look like Magnolia. 
Shout out to Waco. She wants the white cabinet. She wants the, uh, I don't know what you call it, emerald green island with butcher butcher block that you can't cut on. She says, don't nobody cut on my butcher block. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A real, but- it's, a real it's butcher It's like, block? it's a big piece of wood that they call it. That's the name of it. It's like one of the trends, right? Okay. So you got the butcher block, b- butcher countertop. Uh, butcher wood. I don't know what you call that what shit. What a decoration. That's all it, it is. It, but she just, she's like, I don't want nobody in my kitchen. Don't nobody, don't touch nothing. Don't slam nothing. Because what's going to happen is once a month, I'm going to have to go around and do touch up paint because you got the baby in the in the walker or the stroll in the, um, como se llama? Yeah, it's a walker, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, it's just moving is a pain. And That's the point. on top of that, we got to move into the studio once you're done moving into the house. And then we yeah. got to organize everything. There's going to be two sets. You know, you're not going to we're not going to share sets anymore. So yeah, it's yeah, I'm, I'm going to have my own room. But uh, but yeah, we want we want to have it rigged up, man, like lights, cameras, action. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we got people that support the podcast and they want to talk about doing stuff together and collaborating, which is great. And then the other only other revenue source or the way that gr- the show grows is from the fans. So sharing it. If you're not yeah. monetarily supporting on Patreon or Rockfin, you could at least share this right now. Wherever you are, Facebook, Instagram, hit the share button. Yeah, hit the share button, man. Let them know. We're going to talk about what, what topics we got, man. And there's so much going on because we record early in the week usually and a lot happens towards the end of the week. Mm-hmm. And the first thing we have to bring up is Roe v. Wade, right? Roe v. Wade, yeah. And mm-hmm. it's a touchy subject. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. get butt hurt when you don't say exactly what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. But everyone has an opinion, right? And yeah, we're going to break it down. Yeah. So it happened, was it, fr- yeah, it was Friday. Mm-hmm. Also makes you think, why do they make these big ass decisions on a Friday evening? Uh, I don't know. Going bro. into a weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Knowing that people are like, we're going to incite all kinds of violence. Yeah, their that's words, what they wanted. They wanted, they wanted to weaponize the riot. You know, and in areas where nothing really changed too. Yeah, of course they want to. They want to be out there protesting in California, where you can go get, you can go pull up, get your drive-through abortion. Yeah, uh, nine month pride, the baby about to be born. Yeah, and y'all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, New York, uh, uh, Washington you know, State. Uh, I think Arizona, you can Oregon, up to, up to like 20 weeks. There's a lot of these places that have pretty, you know, lazy, lackadaisical kind of laws are about that you can just go if you want to yeah there's a lot of myths um you know there's a lot to unpack with the roe v wade a lot because you have l- l- just real quick and i'll let you go um you have the moral argument mm-hmm. which is just a portion of the whole discussion the moral argument is like is it a human is it not yet a human is it a clump of cells is that a heartbeat or is that an electrical pulse and electrical charge mm-hmm. like there's the whole moral thing like you know hey man this goes against god or you know who's speaking for the the kid who's mm-hmm. speaking for the pre-born who's speaking for the unborn don't they have a right to life and liberty and there's that whole debate now i feel like the biggest thing with this roe v wade thing has to more to do with the law mm-hmm. and the constitution meaning 50 years ago was it I was it like seven justices took it upon themselves to be like, hey, this is going to be federal and this is like the blanket law. Fuck your states like more power to the government mm-hmm. that's going to impose some uh, governance and ruling over individual states. Now, when Clarence Thomas and the gang overturned it, that should be a good band. right? That's a good one. Clarence Thomas and the gang. <laughs> they overturned it. So now it's more power back to the states so that people with federalism. People vote with their feet. So if you live in a state where they doing some shit that uh, how you don't like it, you can move. You know how all the people leave from New York and go to Florida or all the people leave from California and they trying to California my Texas. Right. Same thing. You could vote with your feet. And that's the beauty of federalism. And of course, Hollywood and the people that don't know nothing, the people to be on The View, uh, Wanda Sykes and mm-hmm. just say, you know, Jimmy Kimmel and all these dumbass people that don't know shit. They just get on there. And be like, oh, this is, uh, we no longer have a democracy, and it's whatever happened to the rule of the majority. In that regard, it, what's more democratic, if we're just talking about that phrase, than giving mm-hmm. the power back to the states and the people that the constituents voted for? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, the more, irony it, there. It's basically putting more power in the hands of your state and yeah. out of the federal government, because that way, this is like a local, more local Yeah type of thing yeah the state level taking it away from big government right big brother has a little less power now over people so yeah so all these people crying on the left are basically 
one way to look at it is they're crying because they want to give more power to the federal government and less to the states. There's so much to, like you're right, there's so much to unpack here. And, and I don't want to put words in your mouth when it comes to the sector or anybody's, uh, you know, mouth. But th- did you have a, a development of like how you felt about this prior? You may have not even paid attention to it at all, honestly. No, I mean, it, so, or, or yeah, or in or in the the like jingle verse as you were like going through your entertainment, you know, music and comedy. Did I mean, it ever come up as a talking point? come up as a talking point i mean i think just in life in general yeah um i mean you don't want to be in those situations where you having to make them kind of fucking decisions yeah um and you you don't really unless you do a deep dive and you really really get into the nitty-gritty of like hold on man how does this procedure work and what states wait are because remember in virginia the governor was on the radio a, a while back Alex Jones had brought it up. Don't get triggered, y'all, because I say AJ's name. Oof, that's, yeah. Uh, but anyway, world. anyway, the point, the fact of the matter is, is the governor of Virginia, they they put him on the spot. They're like, isn't it true that you're okay or you're, um, or isn't it the rule where, like, if they try to do this thing, Dang. this procedure to the baby, and the baby fights for its life and fucking survives like the rose that grew from concrete... They're like, what do you do then? They're like, well, we keep it comfortable for yep. two, about two weeks. Keep it comfortable, a.k.a. keep it alive yeah. until the mama decide, do you want us to go ahead and finish what we began? Yeah. yeah. Or is this going to be a little soldier? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, ignorance when it comes to this. A lot of just people just don't know, right? But they want to go with the herd. They want to go with the crowd. And they want to just they want to be um, mad for no not mad for no reason. They have they feel like they have a reason, but they just want to have somebody justify their anger, I guess. Um, there's a lot, bro. There's so many angles to it. Like. One way they trick ladies, mm-hmm. they trick women by the way they frame it. They tell women, these are your, this is your reproductive health. You have men making decisions on your reproductive, uh, 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 what is it? Re- uh, uh, reproductive rights. Rights. Yeah. rights. They're using the word rights. There's none in the Constitution. No. Like the Second Amendment, that's in the Constitution. Right. There free ain't speech, none. That's in the Constitution. Yeah, free speech is in the Constitution. Uh, there's no right that says you have the right to uh, kill an unborn child, yeah. right? And let's just call it that. Um, so the way they trick women is they make it an issue about, like, these are the men. Are, uh, we're, we're turning back the hands of time. They're sending us back to the 1950s. And remember, there was a time where women couldn't vote. And now look at what they're doing to y'all. They're forcing you to have a baby. And they're, they're having a meltdown on the left in such funny ways. Like I think abstinence was trending on Twitter where they're like, okay, well, if you're not going to let us do this, then we're just not going to have sex. And, and, they're, and they're they like, all look like trolls from the movie trolls. But not only that, but abstinence would solve yeah. the entire issue. You're literally doing what the, the, the radical right would want you to do. Yeah. Quote unquote, for those who can't see me, but check this out, bro. There's a movie. I know Mighty Soul is going to bring it up on okay. Her Lounge Podcast. Shout out to Her Lounge Podcast. There is a movie called Unplanned. Have you heard of this? Unplanned, no. Oh, my God. Put on your seatbelt. The lady's name is Abby something or other, right? Okay. So I think the budget was $6 million to make this film, and I think they've already grossed $21 million, and it, the movie's only been out a couple years, right? So she had to go get maybe a pro-life organization money funding to make the film, from like pro-life families and just people with bread Mm. because Hollywood wasn't going to touch it. Mm. Hollywood was not going to let you show how gruesome abortions really are. So this lady used to work for Planned Parenthood and then somehow, some way, she turned pro-life. Like she had enough. She saw some fucked up shit. All this stuff is documented in the movie. So there's actors and there's a script. Some of the acting ain't all that. I'll give you a little heads up. They ain't called your boy Chingo Bling to come (laughs) consult. You know, I could have given them a quick acting lesson. But, um, bro, I was sick to my stomach, bro. Uh, we watched it late at night. Um, finally, we're done putting the kids to bed and everything. I think I was only able to stomach about maybe 15, 20 minutes. It was very disturbing. And I even thought to myself as I was watching it, I was like, this is very, um, what is the word? Um, uh, gratuitous. Mm. Like, in other words, like, do you have to show that? Do you, did y'all have to make that graphic of the little, like the thing, like mm-hmm. they're sticking the vacuum and the little thing. And he's like, he's juking the fucking vacuum, bro. They show like, obviously CGI. I don't think they use actual, <clears throat> but he's bobbing and weaving. Trying Canelo to, in there. Trying to like kick. Yeah, I know. I know. I know this is a funny. Trying to keep it light. I know. I know. I know. We definitely want to keep it light. But, um, but this part, bro. Oh my God. Um. 
I mean, they were just showing, they show where she's working at Planned Parenthood and uh, how they got, how they like kind of finessed her in. And anyway, it just shows like the, the, the travesty and the gruesomeness and how, how brutal, bro. You know what I'm it's saying? It's called unplanned. Unplanned. <laughs> and I'm not sitting up here trying to judge people who may have gone through that, may right. have made that difficult, traumatic decision. But all in all, I will say this. If you remember, if you remember that the racist roots of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, she was down with Hitler. Hitler was a fan of her. She was very vocal about not liking black people, not liking you know minorities, Hispanic, anybody that's low IQ, anybody with any kind of disability. She said, we don't need them to multiply. It's too many of them. Margaret Sanger, the creator of Planned Parenthood, is no coincidence that Planned Parenthood is always in the hood. Mm -hmm. On the southeast side, where I grew up, the largest Planned Parenthood facility in America is right there in my neighborhood. It looks like stairs. No it's like joke. A, it has like the, the shape of the building. The largest one, if I'm not mistaken, in America, specifically placed right between a black neighborhood and a brown neighborhood. Uh, I think the black population is supposed to be like double or triple than what it is. Um, in the last 50 years, when they since Roe v. Wade, I think 20 to 30 million black infants have been murdered in the womb. Genocide. Let's call it that. Those young boys and girls would have grown up to also have children. So it's like an entire genocide to a generation all in the name of, hey, ladies, you don't have to have this burden. You know, this is your right. You know, you don't want the man holding you down. You have the right to pursue a career. Uh, kids are a burden. And it, hold on real quick. Now, I'm going to just say this last part. What Marxism teaches, hold on, hold on, hang on. Okay. What Marxism teaches, right, all this communist lefty ideology, they basically say, they basically say, in society, the, pro, uh, the proletariat, the worker, will never be free from the burdens. They will never be truly free until we remove the burden of even raising children. That's why in communism, it's all about power to the state, power to the government. We'll educate them for you. We'll take care of them for you so that you could be a free worker and you can go on about uh, trying to acquire capital mm -hmm. be like the bourgeoisie. Mm -hmm. So basically, they just mind fucked women into thinking, hey, you have a right. Hey, you got the mi you're a minority and, and, and the men trying to hold you down. And uh, we defy the Supreme Court and yada, 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 yada to trick you into killing off a whole generation. So this is from the Houston Chronicle. The flagship facility is in Houston, Southeast Side. It's a twenty six million dollar center mm -hmm. here on the side. This is huge. This place is ginormous. Yeah. And it's been there since I was a kid. And um, it's a huge industry uh, the abortion industry. They sell the um the little bodies mm -hmm. they sell the the what do they call it um, medical waste they they do stuff with it um after they yank everything out mm -hmm. depending on how they do it they try to like kind of like piece it back together like a little limb like oh put that little arm over here by the torso that way they can sell it for the better price not like i'm gonna sell you a leg or I'm going to sell you an abdomen. They're like, I put it back together for you. Yeah. And then God knows what uh, all the shit they do with it. Stem cell research. Um, we heard they were using it for energy, ele electrical energy in yeah. Baltimore. Um, so basically, there's a lot of money. That's why they mad. And that's why they want y'all to protest. Because they losing out on some money. So if y'all want to do a deep dive and research it, let, let us know in the comments right now. If you're watching on YouTube, let us know in the comments in the Discord chat. Um how much money is set to be lost for the abortion industry? How much money do they lobby the Democrat Party? They basically cut a check to the Dems and say, hey, man, keep, the, keep that shit going. Because if not, they're going to have to shut down in a lot of states. Like Mississippi probably going to have restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a lot of people on the left, they try to use the argument. They're like, well, what about rape and incest? And what about your backwards ass state? And it's like, um, you're talking about 1%. Wait, it's even less than that. It, it's a lot of myth. It's a lot of lies and like women will die. Like Hillary Clinton saying women will die if they don't get these health services from Planned Parenthood. It's like what health services? 99% of the shit they do is just straight abortion. They try to make it seem like, oh, we're here to provide lower income people services. And in case they need anything, we'll refer them. It's like, no, you're just there to fucking kill babies. I'm glad you brought up the rape and incest point because that is a point that they always say. That's the first one they go to, right? Mm -hmm. So it is a small percentage. And anybody with the right mind would obviously say that, yeah, there, there probably should be some sort of exceptions for that or, or whatever you feel about it. My point is, 
when you ask somebody, and this is how I started to see it myself, when you go to the extremes, like we live in an extreme world, right? It's either like all, everybody's extreme this way or extreme that way. And some people mm -hmm. listening, myself included, might be a little bit more moderate where they're like, okay, I'm going to ease my way to whatever feels like is the right thing right now for me in my life. I'm 30, 40, 20, whatever. But when you start to, di to dissect it, they went from safe, uh, what is it, safe, legal, and rare to mm -hmm. up until birth, right? And even past birth. Right, and even past birth, like the example we gave earlier. And then on the other side, you're like, preserve all life. So if you went to the extremes, and I'm, I'm asking those people even on Facebook and Instagram, if you're listening, if you were given the option, okay, we're going to just, it, you, anybody can have it whenever they want, or the other extreme is no abortions across the, across the board in the country. Yeah, Which yeah. side would you want to be on? You know what I mean? And that's just a super hypothetical because like we don't have to, we're not, there, nobody's forcing us putting a gun to our head that's like, you have to pick one of the most extreme. No, they're not. But hypothetically speaking, if this would have continued to be like, go along to get along, the right would have just gone along to get to get along. They would have continued to push it from California to New York to other states until their goal is to just have it across the board whenever you want it, you can have it. The right's goal, and probably still is, if you ask some people, is to outlaw it throughout the entire country. You know what's interesting, man? I'm reading this book about um the, what is it, the politically incorrect opinion, or something, uh, communism politically incorrect communism okay. some shit like that and shout out to uh, juan big stoner on the discord recommended the book and then somebody recommended i think it was ac mata or somebody on the discord recommended it to him first so we gonna get credit what yeah credit is due. somebody was saying we didn't give credit the other day we we mean to give credit all the time uh yeah people make photoshops they make clips so um shout join out, the discord yeah shout out to uh saint and scribe oh the politically incorrect guide to communism that's what it the is. politically incorrect guide to communism. i have it too I have, i've never started it it's pretty funny it's good it's really well done it's like written super light to just clown their ideas it's not dense and boring i actually i actually also have the politically incorrect guide to socialism so i haven't started either one of those books it's probably gonna be just as good as this one because they do a really good job like of making it funny so one of the things they mentioned is that when when um communism took over in russia mm -hmm. in the soviet union they started making abortions readily accessible and free mm. and Women in America were being persuaded to say, how is it that Russian women have more uh, freedom and rights, right, than us? So basically, what, what Marxism and communism does is first, they want to attack God. They want to just take God out of every institution, and then they want to replace it with the state. And uh, that was part of their thing. Like, it, it's very telling that as soon as the commies want to take over, don't get triggered, nobody. As soon as the commies want to take over they start implementing a lot of ungodly shit, like including get your abortion whenever you want. And and here here's here's how the persuasion I want to use to any of the ladies, you know, listening. And really dads too. Yeah. We we should have a lot of say our goddamn selves. But um don't get bamboozled. Don't get persuaded. Don't get tricked. Like even if you're not in that situation, I don't give a damn. Like if you if you're single, you're abstinent, you ain't you ain't running around town slanging that that thing. Um, educate yourself on it, right? Just because it's a hot topic and you just kind of want to know, even if you're not arguing with people and, and going back and forth trying to red pill people, just kind of know how you're being targeted. You're being manipulated. They want to make it seem like it's empowering for you. And, you know, kids are a burden. And, you know, how could you ever have a career? And, and being a homemaker or whatever, like, that's the worst thing. That's how they want to yeah. trick you because... That's how Marxism work. It, it's all about division, division of the genders, and don't let these men tell. All of a sudden, they know what a woman is. All, all of, a, of a all sudden. All of a sudden, men can't get pregnant. Why is nobody asking what trans women feel about this? All of a sudden, yeah. First, first, uh, what, three weeks ago, they were like, men can menstruate, you fucking bigot. And they're like, yes, man. Yeah, birthing persons. You mean chest feeding? You mean chest feeding? Birthing persons. Yeah, the libs of TikTok. They'll post a dude that, they'll screenshot a dude. He's like, oh my God. And he's like, my men's, my menstrual cramps. And I just feel so powerful to be a woman. It's like, bro, you a biological male to every single cell in your body. Like if we dig up your bones years from now, it's going to say male, 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 male. If you're having a heart attack, you got to go tell the doctor like, hey, bro, I'm having a heart attack. And they need to know. Are you biological male or are you biological female? Because the symptoms are different. How we treat Treatment's you is different. different. Yeah. Everything's different. It's crazy that this will trigger, this will upset people. This type of conversation where we're just being open about what sounds crazy and what doesn't sound crazy, right? Mm -hmm. To the majority of people will trigger other people, right? So wait, not, in your opinion, right? Yes, sir. 
it was a good move, right? To give it back to the states. Yeah, we gotta we gotta uphold the constitution, man. And like I said, a lot of these companies, they'll fly you. They'll be like, Hey man, you work in Tesla in Texas and you have in that situation and you're trying to go through with that, uh, we could we'll pay you and we'll fly you. It's cheaper for the company to pay you and fly you or whatever, pay your expenses to go to Oregon and get that done than to pay all your maternity leave. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. You know what I'm saying? They um On the way into the studio, you know what I was reading Senator Warden, uh, Elizabeth Warren had proposed that the Biden administration do? What the, what they say? Set up plant parenthoods at national parks. Well, here it gets worse. It gets worse. So the Department of Education just put out like a $700 uh, proposal document on page like 461 buried in the middle. It basically says any high school who uh, uh, receives federal money, right? They get a funding from the government, right? Department of education put this out. They said any high school that's receiving federal funding has to have abortion clinic on deck on campus for the kids, who proposes? Department of Education. Wow. And if you don't go along with it, no you lose your funding. Another thing is you're going to lose your uh, your lunch money. Biden wants to take kids' lunch money. If the schools who receive federal funding don't go along with the pronoun game, you know the pronoun game where if Rob misgenders his child, we can call CPS on him. In other words, the state will have their social workers at your doorstep trying to take away your cheering because you're like, nah, bro, this Jimmy or, or this Timmy or this, <laughs> this, you know, Ricky, this my son, and he's a biological male, and I'm going to call him my son. And they're going to be like, uh, no, this is a safe space. <laughs> this is a safe space. The teachers pick the genders now. They, they want your kids illiterate, uneducated. Uh, they want them to play victims. They want them to, to think that Ds and Fs are unfair and racist, and they want y'all to have readily available um, uh, abortion clinics on campus, on site, uh, and they want them to play the gender pronoun ideology game. Uh, I need somebody to Photoshop Biden taking kids' school money. Scribe, Juan Big Stone, or somebody, please Photoshop yeah. that. Yeah. Speaking of fans, too, fan-made uh, content, there's, mm -hmm. so on our Rockfin channel, guys, R-O-K-F-I-N dot yeah. com forward slash Red Pill Tamales, uh, you get the stuff there a lot faster because they're in their uh, interface and then everything that they do on, at Rockfin is faster than YouTube or anywhere else. So mm -hmm. if you want the show quick, sign yeah. up for a Rockfin subscription. But we had a, a fan made a bunch of clips, Victor <clears throat> Paletis, maybe? Yeah, 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 that's a base tattoo. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's sending in some clips, and I'm going to post them on the What Did He Said page. So if you're not following that page, it is coming constant fire yeah fire ass clips uh let us know what y'all think in the comments we're getting a lot of good comments coming in from the uh, facebook and the instagram people on here saying like yeah it's a multi-billion dollar industry like there's money to be made like they need you to be in that situation and make that decision so that they can get their money and they'll like like if you watch the movie unplanned um it's very disturbing and uh like i said gratuitous but they show how they manipulate the girls. Where they're like, no, it's just a clump of cells. And, and they're like, but my baby won't feel anything, right? They're like, oh, no, this is very, like, no. We, you were talking about Abby Johnson? Yeah. So is that who made it? I believe that's her last name. Okay, okay, okay. But you can look at the credits, like, yeah, unplanned. Like, it says, based on the true story of Michael Abby. Michael Dell's in it, too? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't finish it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, you only got 15, 20 minutes in. Did my soul watch it all? No, nah, I think we went to bed, right? you know. I was like, okay, I'm going to bed. And she's like, all right, she got the hint. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, it's called Unplanned. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking more about this because uh, also, I mean, I guess we can just get into what Twitter, Twitter is just such a dark place a lot of the times, you it know? It depends, yeah. Oh, it depends. But if you're, if you're trying to like scour the internet for what, uh, I guess, social commentary has to say about certain things, you go to Twitter, right? Oh, they be on my dick on Twitter, boy. <laughs> Um, there's a writer, right, for the L.A. Times, uh -huh. that, who I know and I've worked with before. Um, his name is Gustavo Ariano. He's a good writer. He knows his tacos, you know, shit like that. He's written a couple books. Um, is he writing about these tacos now? Which tacos? The abortion tacos? Yeah. Nah, man. They, they were talking about the migrants that died oh, from right, heat right. exhaustion in San Antonio, right? Yep. In, a, in a trailer, right? 42 of them, I think. Uh, now it's up to 50. Oof. Now it's up to 50. Um, and basically... They like to be on my dick in t on Twitter. Excuse my language. I I'll say something else because, uh, you know, big tech. Pepino. But basically, bro, um, s they like to gossip early in the morning. So this travesty happened. 50 migrants died due to the left's 
ideas and policies, right? This Biden and the Mallorcas, the uh, Department of Homeland Security, they have aided and abetted. They've exacerbated the situation. The border is not secure. It is not safe. You got all kind of fentanyl, jihadists. You got people from all over the world coming. Ain't nobody checking shit. Uh, Trompitas wall, you know what I'm saying? Got a big, got gaps all up in it. And uh, they just walking through and it's dangerous. It's a lot of human trafficking. You got the rape trees. I know, sorry, I don't want to trigger nobody. Uh, children coming up missing and disappearing. Um, it's a very, very sad situation. This is not your, your abuelito's border. This ain't your grandpa's border. We're like, no, el coyote, ahí, ahí te pasa, ni ya nada pasa, you know, no big deal. It's it's like billions of dollars. Anyway, so so the writer, right, buddy from uh, LA Times, God forbid he ever has a any kind of like centrist or conservative opinion because then he won't have a job at the LA Times. Facts. He'll have to go to Substack. But anyway... Um, Somebody from San Diego retweeted some shit and tagged him. I guess retweeted Gustavo's thing and was like, um, something like, I bet Chingo Bling thinks this is all California's fault. I guess he's trying to say, like, this happened in your state. Hmm. And I'm like, bitch, I never said our border was the shit. Like, it's you ain't seen the Haitians in Del Rio. Like, you didn't see all the Ukrainians and the Indians and the Russians and the everybody and their mama, the jihad people on terrorist watch list, MS-13. Uh, you know, I know people got triggered when Trompitas was like, they're not sending their best. You know, you know they're they're emptying their jails and they're we're becoming the dumping ground of America's problems. Some of y'all was weighing weed on the scale. Wow, he said that. Y'all was like, <laughs> what the hell he say? <laughs> Drug dealers. <laughs> anyway, um, so they had their little discussion talking about like, yeah, this is what Gustavo said. He said, yeah, he's been lost. Uh, he he was lost long ago. So basically, the minute the minute you no longer go along with their opinions or they, if you the, the minute you no longer agree with everything they say, now you're lost. How am I lost if I have more facts? Like the facts are on my side. How am I lost if I've done more research and I have realized the error of my ways? Mm -hmm. If I see that it's not sustainable, I know that it's not secure. If you follow. Uh, you know, informed with Anthony, Jorge Ventura, uh, Bill Melugin, I don't know how to say his name, just everybody, Savannah, Savannah Hernandez, yeah. Savannah Hernandez, all these people that go down and they turn on the camera, they're like, where are you from? They're like, Venezuela, where are you coming from? Colombia, where are you coming from? India, India, where are you from? How long, you, where did you come through? The Darien Gap? A lot of India. The Darien Gap? Uh, yeah, tons of India. Um, and so on and so forth. And it's like, where are these people going to live? How are we going to clothe them? How are we going to house them? Where are they going to work? You know what I'm saying? Aren't we in a recession? Wait, isn't there already supply chain issues? We already have shortages. You Let's know? go back to he he's lost, lost a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, I mean, get off my chile. Like, <sighs> like you are beholden to the LA Times opinion, sir. Um, I've worked with him before. Um, but that's the strategy they use. They try to ostracize you. They don't want you to play reindeer games. The minute you start stating facts and saying how many jihadists. It's a ticking time bomb. You got all the jihadists. Not to mention that notice that the left stream, the left stream, mainstream media, lamestream, they're not going to cover this 50 people dead in a, in a thing until they can figure out how they can blame Abbott, which, you know, hey, we have a border here. It, it'd be nice if more yeah. was done. Yeah. I just heard Carrie Lake who's running for governor in Arizona. She came in spicy. She wants all the smoke, all the smoke. We need her on the podcast. She, she, Carrie Lake, running for governor in Arizona. She went on Fox News, which they're controlled opposition. Don't think I'm over Don't here. Don't get it twisted. I ain't got my pom poms out for the Murdochs and their little their little uh, propaganda machine. But basically, Carrie Lake went on there and let it loose. She's like, elections have consequences. This is an illegitimate regime. They broke this what we had at the border. You were handed a secure border. You undid everything. Now we have a mess on our hands. And um, and she pretty much said, like, they, they're they working with the cartel. The cartel making more money off moving people than moving dope. Uh, making, like, I forget what it is, a couple billion a month is what they're making. Uh, I think it's like $34 million a day or something like that. And, um, and she pretty much went on TV and said, buddy's illegitimate. They're causing this. It don't have to be like this. And the left is not going to cover this situation that much because it's going to reveal how dangerous their ideas are. This is what y'all caused. This is what y'all wanted. 
This is a. Uh, I know it feels like 2020 was just yesterday, dude. It feels uh-huh. like we just had this huge controversial, which it feels like almost every election is controversial, but this one extremely is extremely controversial. controversial. Um, but we're in 2022, so we have midterms, right? Mm-hmm. Or we have, um, yeah, we've had all kinds of important elections already. We're going into July. There's more elections coming up in November, and mm-hmm. then 2023 is not really gonna. It's it's basically gonna be people ramping up and getting ready for 2024. There's mm-hmm. not a lot that's gonna be happening next year, other mm-hmm. than. Um, like really direct campaigns and uh, boots on the ground kind of thing, getting people rallied up about different causes to lead into 2024. So if you're for listening for the first time, I got to say this, like, please go back a couple episodes. You don't have to go back through all 187 yeah, we're, of yeah, them. Yeah, we're almost on 200. Almost, yeah, we're, I think we're about to break into the 190s here this next week. But um, there's a lot of stuff that we've talked about that have come to fruition. And if you're interested in as to why that happened or how that happened, maybe you'll find a couple of nuggets of, of gold in there in those podcasts. But mm-hmm. there's a lot that's going to transpire between now and November. And you, you just got to be, in my opinion, as informed as possible. Just don't take every New York Times word for it. Nah, fuck that. Did you hear about the Latina in Virginia that won? her race the Latina Virginia. She, i heard about it but i didn't dive into man, it. man really interesting like it's looking like a red tsunami and it's so beautiful to see like latinas and latinos getting involved and basically saying hey man the left left me yeah if, if you lost chingo bling <laughs> you lost Ching- the left y'all gotta be more persuasive democrats y'all gotta work harder to persuade me and be like look chingo this is why this is better for your people and your community and your economy like the reason we're being soft on crime is because you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. uh you got these woke district attorneys uh letting people out uh, uh, michael berry was talking about um a dude who just killed his ex-girlfriend's nine-year-old daughter he was out on five different like bonds Oof. like felony was out, caught another felony. You supposed to go in now. They little slap on the wrist. Next thing you know, he's at his ex's house and shoots the nine year old little girl in the head, Jeez. and then shoots the ex in the shoulder, uh, trying to kill her. But uh, anyway, it's really beautiful to see this red tsunami. Well, America first, yeah, type of uh, 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 tsunami. Candidates. Yeah, because we're under attack by even the rhinos. You know what I mean? The Cowtown GOP. The There's sw- an establishment. They yeah, want to stab- stay in power. The establishment swamp Republicans. They right there in cahoots. They all controlled opposition. They they were setting, setting us up for failure. And um, But I forget the young lady's name. Uh, she was a deputy to a sheriff. That's her background. So she has a um, law enforcement background, and she kicked ass and won in uh, Virginia. I don't even know what, what the hell she won. You know, you talk about Latinas and stuff. Where do you know where AOC's from? Uh, the, supposedly from the Bronx. Okay. But, but so yeah. regardless, she's uh, talking about Sandy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they called her Sandy? in high school. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because she really not in the Bronx like that. So I've seen videos of people going around and being like, "Do you know who this is?" You know, yeah, they're yeah. like, "No, I've never no. seen her. Don't know." No, no. She just controlled opposition. So she's on Twitter right now, uh, sharing this kind of stuff, right? All right. This is what uh, AOC put on Twitter. She said, Republicans are mad because I'm sharing this information. Too bad. And then she said, freedom of choice is an uh, inalienable right. Your bodily autonomy belongs to you. Uh, and then she has a whole bunch of little, like, memes. It's basically how to go about circumnavigating the uh, abortion, depending on what state you're in, if you want to get one. She's literally posting, like, techniques and methods of, to go about having one. Taking pills. Yeah. Um, first of all, one of the methods for abortion is called RU486. All right? It's some pills, right? Now, in the movie, Unplanned, mm-hmm. so this lady, Abigail, that's her name? Abby? I believe so, yeah. Okay, so this lady, Abby, um, she, um, oh, we're getting all the bots now on um, oh, great. on Instagram. Yeah. Shout out to Mark Zuckerberg. He allowed all the uh, NPCs be on there. Anyway, so they showed how they told her at the Planned Parenthood. They're like, yeah, it's real easy. They said, you're, you, they said uh, take this first pill now, and then they said, tomorrow, take these other four, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they said, your uterus will gently, uh, I forget what word they use, um, this will gently empty your uterus. That's the word they use? That's how they said, gently. So she was like bleeding for weeks. I mean, just, it looked like a crime scene. She's in the tub. She's hurt her stomach, because you're taking these chemicals, and it's it's dangerous as fuck. Yeah, yeah. You got all these kind of side effects and it's it's trying to kill what's in your stomach. 
and it's tearing shit up. I'm interested in what people, you know, people on Facebook and Instagram and your fans have to say because there are some outlets that are saying that across the board, across the country, it is an unpopular decision to have handed this back to the states. And then they started citing that certain minority groups and Hispanics was apparently, I don't know where they got their data from, but overwhelmingly unpopular with Hispanics. You're so. saying they're trying to make it seem like Hispanics are pro-choice. Yeah. Which it's funny how they say my body, my choice, because I could have swore when y'all was trying to force that jab on everybody. Yeah. Which we didn't already seen what happened to Bieber and his wife and everybody else. Suddenly, sudden adult death syndrome. We're not putting the two together. We're just saying. Yeah. I mean, y'all act like all of a sudden blood clots ain't a thing. Yeah. But anyway, y'all were forcing the pilots and the nurses and the cops and the firemen and the Navy. The Navy, their deadline's coming up this week that you either going to get kicked out or you're going to take this experimental mRNA. And um, you know the doctor that was discharged for giving out um, what do you call them exemptions? Uh uh-uh. uh. I'll, I'll try to pull it up. Wait, if you can. A get navy, back. a navy doctor. I think it was an. Um, I have to find it. I think I it was mean, an army. How is that good for our defense and our national security that you're forcing? Right. All of a sudden, there's no religious exemption. There's no. Hey, man, I just had chemo. Hey, man, I might be allergic. Hey, man, I got an autoimmune thing. Hey, man. Rona don't even kill like that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's like, what's the survival rate if you're young and uh, healthy? U.S. Army Dr. Major Samuel Sigloff has been ex- uh, reprimanded and discharged for giving soldiers exemptions to the, the jab, the, the, the vacuna, you know? Yeah, so these My Body, My Choice people like ALC, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's My Body, My Choice. Damn, son, everybody that was against the, the vacuna being mandated, that's what they were saying. Hey, man, my body, my choice. Dude, there's nothing. You can get yours if you want. Go get the, boosted. Yeah, go get boosted, all six of them. There's nothing for these people to run on, which is why this is even more absurd that they're going to try to make this the big, the the focal point of their November you know campaign is going to be this. And they're going to pull every yeah. stop to try to confuse you yeah. and try to put you into a complete spiral of like, well, well a choice and, and uh-huh. mine and, and it's and hers women, and not female his. And, and, and it's female rights and dude, you're a woman and they're trying to hate on you and your body. The and way you say it, man, keep your head on a swivel. It's, it's how they frame it to you. They, they'll call, this is all linguistic tricks. It's all persuasion. It's wording. They frame it to you as reproductive health and your reproductive rights. They were saying that across all major platforms. They, the, the Supreme news. Court has taken your right. Reproductive right. That is untrue. Men are deciding on your reproductive health. And it's like, first of all, it's a legal issue. It's, it has more to do with the Constitution and state rights more than anything. You should want that. You should want your state to have more say than the federal government. What part of that do you not get? Well, because they've been bamboozled, bro. They, they tricking them into... You know, making it seem like men are, I mean, all, ho- I haven't checked up on Latino Hollywood this morning. Has anybody checked up on Eva Longori, George <laughs> Lopez, and the rest? Um, John Leguizamo, I'm pretty sure they got the pom-poms out for Planned Parenthood. There's a lot of money to be made. Um, like I said, the, the abortion industry, they lobby to the Democrats. The Democrats, we already know, got people on payroll. Let's not forget, Eva Longoria spent some big bread along with George Soros buying out Latino based talk radio to to basically start putting the pushing the Latinx and the Latinx and pushing all the leftist ideology. Uh, so shout out to Manny Prado. We had him on the podcast. You introduced him to me and to the show and to our fans. And uh, he had an event over the weekend. I went to it, met some cool people. And what that not just that, but what I've been gearing myself up to is really focusing on Texas politics, really mm-hmm, focusing, mm-hmm. In, focusing, in, focusing in on Houston politics, the local mm-hmm. stuff. We talk about it all the time, but when this Roe v. Wade came down and you saw the outrage across the country in some places where it literally has zero effect on them. Yeah, they're protesting in Oregon and Washington State, California. California it, where they're going to let you. Do, yeah, you can do whatever you want, right? Which That's what those people wanted, so that state's going to vote to maintain that, right? And Texas is different. Every state's different. So the federal issues... They are important. You should have a voice in them. Everybody should vote, depend, even despite what you might think, uh, you know, dumb onion machines may have played a role in it. whatever. You should still go out there and voice your opinion. But you start looking into your school board. You start looking at what they're doing with your kids in schools. You start looking at taxes. You start looking at all these things as you get older and become an adult for a lot of these, you know, kids that don't want to become adults. I was in that basket. I still don't want to grow up, but I feel like you have to at some mm-hmm. point, right? 
Um, so local, like focusing in on local and then taking whatever you find is important in your local community and taking it to the federal level and then voting that way. So you have an understanding of mm-hmm. like how your shit operates mm-hmm. is probably it's the best option for the future. Yeah. Basic economics. Politicians, they're always going to try to bamboozle you and, and sell you a, um, wolf tickets. Yeah. They'll be like, you know, the rent is too high. And then everyone who's going through struggles because of inflation, that's a hidden tax on everybody. They're going to be like, yeah, the rent is too high. Wages aren't going up as fast as rent rates are. And, and then they'll be like, that's why we're going to do rent control. And, it, and then you're like, yeah, I like this guy. I'm going to vote for him because he's going to keep the rents cheap. But there's a whole nother list of trickle effects of how in the long term that's going to lead to like shittier quality apartments. You're, you're just not creating competition there's no incentive for the landlord to fix up the property and maintain it now dude it's all money it's follow these bags right yeah. so in new mm-hmm. york for instance you know you talk about homeless problems you, you always go to the coast right california new york in new york there's like 10 times the amount of buildings like i mean just, even, even here and austin texas totally but, totally. but in new york it's so big there's so many people crammed in this little area mm-hmm. so in, in new york city there's so many more buildings empty vacant buildings and warehouses than are even homeless people. Because so, they have rent control, yeah. Right, like there's a lot of methods you could go about fixing these issues, but they don't want to fix the issues. Nah, because by the time the politician wins and they trick you, the effects are starting to take place. By the time the effects really hit you, where it's like, bro, there's more abandoned, empty um, buildings that there was no incentive for the landlord to keep up. Yeah. They, they were losing money right. because people were just basically being like, I'm going to keep this apartment empty and I'm going to go live in Florida. And anytime I come to New York, I'm still going to have this cheap ass rent because it's rent control. And now there's homeless people who can't even get access or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. By the time people start to feel the effects of it, the politician done moved on. You know what I mean? That's why they don't want you to know basic economics. I say it all the time, man. The miran la cara de mensos. They really do think that you're that dumb that you're not. Gonna a lot look. of people are though. A lot of people are. Cause, cause they, they, they use um like identity politics. Yeah. Like, a, trust me, a lot of women, just going back to the Roe v. Wade, a lot of women think that, um, you know, that uh, oh, this is, oh, my God, my life is over. And how, how dare you? Your, your hands off my womb and all this. And it's <laughs> like, bro, you have other options. Like, they just lie. Sorry to keep going back to Roe v. Wade, but, like, they lie to you. They'll be like, if a woman has this situation like if the baby has down syndrome or if the baby no está saliendo bien está malito whatever whatever uh, um, you know if she's she will die and it's like actually no because they, they try to lie to you and say if you have this the treatment is abortion if you have this condition the treatment is abortion if you have this the treatment is abortion if they take away abortion women will die and it's like uh fact check actually if you have this you have these options if you have this, there's all these options. If you have this, there's even adoption. There's all kinds of stuff. And Kanye tried to tell y'all, <laughs> Kanye tried to tell y'all, he said he was crying on stage and he said, I can't believe we thought about adopt, um, aborting North. And he was up there crying and they flipped it on him like, this man's unfit. He can't be president. He's off his meds. You know what I mean? Yep. SNL, what do you have to say about it? Pete Davidson, get out here. And <sighs> it's like, and his defense was, What's this, what kind of a sick society do we live in that I wouldn't tear up and get emotional over the thought that we considered sticking a vacuum up Kim K's womb and sucking out this little thing? I mean, what hasn't been up there already, right? Whatever. Probably not the first vacuum you've been up there. <laughs> in the di- Let's go to a couple questions. We've almost done like the full hour uh, on, on live, which is cool. But we got a couple questions. So if people want to ask questions, where can they ask questions to you? Uh, if you want to reach us direct, hit us up on the Discord chat app you know the discord app d-i-c d-i-s-c yeah of course okay there's discord. no h in it no. d-i-s-c-o-r-d download the app and if you want to sign up how do they get access with that one dollar because you could join all the un di- dollar you get access to all the discord channels at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales yeah if you go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales the one dollar tier gets you access to the entire discord chat room where we have a room about survival if you want to talk about getting some chickens getting a half calf for your freezer yeah um we got the puto gains channel we got the tia book club we diy got TIA investing investing DIY, gaming sports we talk about all these things and of course i ain't gonna lie to you i'm never in the gaming room <laughs> not yet not yet but we do want to set up a gaming situation because i heard it's some money in that shit t-pain said i make more money off gaming than i do music and has um, for the last like four or five years. I think that's you said. ridiculous. That's why, crazy. Why am I so late? 
Um, which he has a team and we need a team. So we need a TIA gaming team. So if you feel like you're a gamer that wants to get involved and you want to have these kind of conversations, join the discord for sure. But, uh, here's a funny meme from Juan. So human trafficking is the only supply chain they quote in quotes haven't disrupted. And that they have the Crowder's oh, yeah. change my mind. Yeah. Uh, meme. Yeah. Please send me that or I'll get on the discord. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I want you to comment on that. Yeah. Cause look, the Keystone pipeline is closed. The migrant pipeline is wide open, open. It's wide open all the way from the Darien Gap <clears throat> through Panama. Uh, Costa Rica's in on the game. They funneling people from all over the world. It's a very sophisticated, detailed, logistical operation they have going on. Uh, Tapachula, Mexico. If all this shit is new to you, tune in, log in. Please. But Tapachula, Mexico, over there by Chiapas. That's where they, the uh, NGOs, like where the, uh, the Catholic volunteer, mm -hmm. uh, they're like... Uh, Los migrantes, you know, gather up. They we want to get them ten thousand, fifteen thousand deep, and then they send them to get their thirty day visa and los papeles, you know, from uh, el permiso for, through uh, in Mexico. They take them over there. Everybody gets their, their little permiso, and then boom, they move them up to the next spot. That's when the cartels divvy them up. They give them their wristband. Quien pagó plaza? Quien pagó las taxas? Or whatever, whatever. And then they dump their papeles before they cross. Everybody got their cell phone. Everybody, by the time they arrive to the border, they're bathed. They got fresh little clothes. Like, ain't nobody tired. Don't nobody got ampollas. Like, nobody's feet hurt. Um, they pretty much have, they rent buses. This is a very sophisticated, well thought out thing that they have going on. That's why they're going to impeach Mallorcas from Department of Her uh, Homeland Security. And they're going to impeach Brandon, that's going to be the first article of impeachment is how they got the border fucked off. And if this is the first time you're hearing all this, you're like, how do you know that we've got boots on the ground that have been on the show and tell us what's going on? And, and who is that? Uh, who, who? Oscar. Oh, yeah. Oscar at Blue Ramirez. Yo, we got, for, yeah. If you're not familiar with him, follow him. Yeah. We got Oscar at Blue that he's tapped in. There's several. Uh, we had him on a couple episodes. Mm -hmm. And I just got the new book. It's called uh, America's Covert Border War. Mm. And it talks about all the jihadists we have coming in right because we're taking in so many refugees from these from these uh like syria and all these different places out there in the middle east afghanistan we're taking all these refugees ask sweden how that worked out for them sweden has 61 no go zones that's where the cops can't even go into the neighborhood and if you live in that neighborhood you have no religious freedom you must be muslim it's sharia law uh there's all kind of just if you're just a blonde haired, blue eyed little teenage girl that happens to mosey on into the no go zone, you will get gang raped by these refugees. Um, it's so bad that the cops need permission from the community elder, like the religious leader, to be like, hey, can I, uh, can we go up in there? Cause some people are having some issues. What? 61 no go zones in Sweden. That's what happened. Trompitas was like, a lot of these countries, like Jordan, a lot of these countries were on a list, and he said, they're not doing a good job of checking the background of these people. They're, they're not seeing if they got ties to Al Qaeda or any of these other people, ISIS. And we can no longer accept a whole bunch of people from this list of countries because y'all doing a bad job of, of um, what's the word, man? Will you fact check? Will you go through and. Um, oh, background check? Yeah, just. Uh, check. Yeah, there's another word, but yeah, that'll work, right? Y'all doing a bad job of reviewing these people, their, their security checks. Well, what did the news do? Instead of the news saying, well, yeah, it looks like they are doing a bad job. Yeah, it makes total sense why this handful of countries, we probably should chill. Oh, no, this is Islamophobic. That's why our democracy is at stake. And if you're a person of color, you have to vote him out. That's all they do all day. They just try to look at how they could twist shit. It's, you know, it's funny to think how many people are hearing a lot of this for the first time that are tuning into one of the lives here. Mm hmm. Uh, not that many. We ain't got that many people on here. Well, that have come trickled in and out. Let's just yeah, say, yeah, even yeah, if yeah. it was a total of 100, those mm -hmm. 100 people are like, holy, I hadn't heard 95% of what Chingo Bling was saying yeah. uh, on Tuesday's live, right, yeah. on Instagram or, or Facebook. Yeah. And it's because who's got the monopoly on the information? Well, yeah, I'm not allowed to say a lot of this stuff. Like, no. YouTube would ding you. Uh, like, we already know, Stacey Abrams, Hillary Clinton, everybody on the left, you could look up a compilation of everybody in the Democratic Party saying... Trump is illegitimate. The election was stolen. The Russians interfered. They made memes and they <clears> were running ads and Facebook helped and, and yada, 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 yada. The minute you say, hey, what's up with them 2,000 mules? Mm -hmm. Hey, why are there more ballots than there are 
registered voters and why are dead people able to vote and so on Tim they're Pool. like they, they remove your shit Tim Pool was making a great point the other night uh, I think it was like Friday night where legacy media posts all these now they do a ton of clips of whether it's like Colbert or the news or whatever on YouTube mm -hmm. and everywhere and um, and what they'll do is they'll they'll just they'll promote that you'll always see like a Trevor Noah or a late night show or, or one of those people's or a clip from uh, Don Lemon or somebody online right yeah and it'll push down a Crowder bit or a, or, yeah. a, or a pool or this show. More people have been getting this uh, suggested to them, which is interesting, right? On YouTube. RPT? On RPT, yeah. Okay. We'll see that in the comments. We're like, hey, first time suggested. Great, you know, great content, whatever. What's up? What's up? Puro pinche RPT, big dot. But if you compare it, right? Even, mm -hmm. and he used even Rogan and uh, all these other, you know, Daily Wire, all these people, they get like hundreds of millions of plays. It still doesn't compare to the billions of plays that legacy media will get on YouTube and all these other social platforms because they control it all. Yeah, all the normies, man. You're, it's an information war, and you're under attack. You know what I'm saying? You can you can go on about your business and just ignore all this and just hope for the best and just kind of like close your eyes and any mini money mo vote for who you think or yeah. whatever. But you can't escape inflation. You can't escape these inflationary policies, like the the whole economic game plan, like how dumb all this petroleum issue to gas like we w you were handed in a country that was energy independent we were full spectrum energy dominant we were slanging gasolina like crack like masa yeah. like masa and, and near thanksgiving and we talked about the uh processing plant was it freeport lake yeah. jackson mm -hmm. Freeport. that i guess went down something happened an explosion and it went offline which means that that natural gas it's like if that supply went down, don't you think our price would go down? I mean, would go up, right? If one of your processing plants goes offline, that's less supply. That's more demand. That means your price going to go up. Well, why is it that our price went down a little bit due to it being offline? Because that processing plant was exporting natural gas to Europe as part of our strategy to try to let the Europeans know you don't have to buy cheap gas from Russia. I know Biden approved the Nordic 2 pipeline to go right through ukraine so that putin could pump his gas into europe and germany could live you know cheaply and and woo be all fucking greta thunberg yeah meanwhile you're buying up all the bass gas from putin keeping the war going it's crazy that it went offline in freeport and that allowed our price to actually come down a little bit it's like what why because that gas wasn't for us that gas was for europe Blowing people's minds on a Tuesday morning, man. There's actually some news about that. We'll get, we'll get into that into the next episode for Thursday because there's a lot to unpack there yeah. with uh, with Biden and uh, the president from France. Is it Macron? Yeah, Mac Macron. 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 M Macron. Do you like macarons? Yeah, they're a little bit too sweet for me. Macarons. They're, they're too sweet for me. But uh, he kind of put Brandon on spot. I'll play a video. Macron. A, a lot Macron. Of, Macron. Macron. He's a little guy. He's a little guy. Macron. I don't know how big he is. Well, Macron. He, he looked tiny next to Brandon. I don't think Brandon's that big. But okay. regardless, um, if you're not listening, if you're not watching on YouTube, you don't get to see a lot of the clips that we end up playing on a lot of our episodes. I don't think we played anything because... If you're not, if you're watching live, I mean, it's, you, you miss the context, right? But mm -hmm. uh, he put Brandon on the spot in front of journalists and reporters about some interesting information about Saudi Arabia, and uh, I'll just leave it at that when it comes to energy and fuel. So Macron has some in interesting info, yeah, yeah, about Saudi Arabia. Like what? What you mean? Well, basically that they're tapped out; they can't provide no more. The Saudi don't have none. They're done. They're that they're don't done. make no sense. Well, first of all, Pennsylvania is the Saudi Arabia of natural gas. Um, this administration rather, they rather beg dictators like Maduro. They rather go to Venezuela. They rather go to Iran, countries that hate us. They rather go to OPEC on their knees and beg for some oil. Meanwhile, you got people in Oklahoma, people in Texas, people in the Permian Basin like, bitch, we got it. What it do? Um, it's like, nah, we don't want it from y'all. It's called, what do you call it? Controlled destruction or demolition? Uh, of our the, economy, the managed decline, managed of, decline of America. Yeah, man, they 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 trying to turn it into Venezuela, big dog. And I'm a, I, Facebook. Thank y'all for watching. Uh, we almost at episode 200, so I'm gonna log off on Facebook. They trying to turn us into Venezuela. Don't fall for the okie doke. Adios, Facebook. Adios, um, Facebook. Instagram. Well, we still got we still got a handful of people on Instagram. But yeah, man, I, I'd hate for. Um, stuff to get so bad mm -hmm. to where that's what's going to force people to pay attention like whoa 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 
this is not the America I remember. It's going to, it unfortunately will be, and I was talking to some people at the event, at the picnic on Sunday, and that's what they were saying. Like, a lot of people, unfortunately, they wait until everything gets to like, oh, dire straits, and like, what am I going to do? I'm panicking, or I, I didn't plan for this, and, and they're really down on their luck mm -hmm. to start paying attention. And if people started paying attention a little earlier, like maybe 200 episodes ago when Jingo Bling started talking some shit that they were unfamiliar with, they'd be a little bit more informed on this. Um, I wonder if me sharing this live that we just did, um, if it somehow is going to like hurt my page because a uh, shout out to Juan Perez. He's been fixing up my page, bro. Uh, making it to where like my followers going up. Um, just like just fixing everything. Like yeah. I'm staying off of it. And I wonder if he's going to hit me like, Hey dude. So the algorithm doesn't like when you say Roe v. Wade stuff, you know, what? <laughs> I understand that. I want if you're listening, like you gotta, that's such a, a way to self-censor like by it's self-censoring by force. I'm trying to monetize, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm not making a penny off of none of this big tech. Everybody else making thousands of dollars a month. I got 1.1 million followers on Facebook and we're just trying to like figure out what meme fucked me up. There's yeah. so many rules. You're right though. There's so many rules. It's like, Hey, you don't own the rights to that. Or Hey, you reposted that from your YouTube and YouTube, they don't, you know, but go on. Yeah. To common bond. We're talking about place. self, you're talking about self censorship. Yeah. Self censorship because uh, they're, they're getting what they want without saying, Hey, you jingle blink cannot post this, but we know what their terms and which change all the time, but yeah. the ter their terms of service have it in there mm -hmm. and they make it to where, well, shit, if I want to get monetized again, I'll let me go ahead and go through there and sift like Juan's doing, sift through the rules. What can we not post? Let's get rid of that. Next thing you know, you're not even doing what you want to do. And uh, I mean, but, I can't speak yeah. for you. It becomes a, a, a chore it, that you don't even want to do. I mean, if we had more patrons and if yeah. we had sponsors, then it wouldn't matter. Right. It'd be like, I don't give a fuck about tiktok money yeah and that's the goal it'd be like bro we got so many patrons and sponsors like i'm free i can say what i want however i'm in this predicament where like all right bro you trying to tell people about the legalized freedom tour you trying to tell them you're going to be in el central california july 9th ontario uh july 7th irvine july 6th you're trying to tell them you're a comedian you know what i'm saying but it's like yeah. well your page got to look like a content creator. You know what I mean? You got to right. kind of like, how are you going to tell people about your tour dates? You're too busy trying to educate people and wake them up to some shit. Yeah. So that's the catch 22 conundrum. Like they do not want to uplift Brown voices <laughs> as much as they say they do. They say they do, but all they really mean is we want Marxist little socialist commie, <laughs> like fucking all about division. We, all the people who like, all the Latinos that are uh, pushing the victimhood and like women, keep your hands off women's wombs and you fucking Republican, blah, 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 blah. These right wing extremist Bible thumping Southern Baptists, keep your hands off the women's keep your rosaries off yeah, my ovaries. reproductive rights. And it's like, well, basically that's who's going to that. Those are the brown voices they want to uplift. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's there's still a lot more to unpack there with that. We'll, we'll probably get more into it again on Thursday's episode. But here, let's just dissect this tweet real quick. Are you a big Samuel L. Jackson fan? Uh, yeah, I like his acting, but I already know where you're going with this. Oh, you saw it? Um, No, vaguely. I just kind of caught wind. Okay, so he tweeted this out, Um, I guess, yesterday. Ah, uh, what a shame. Sam Jackson tweeted, How's Uncle Clarence feeling about o overturning loving versus virginia so are you familiar with that no what's, okay what's it's okay loving? that you're not so that was a that was also like a civil rights era um overturning by the Supreme court of interracial marriages interracial couples basically that said that states that were outlawing that was went against you know the constitution basically so it was one of those like okay like now they can't discriminate based off interracial couples wanting to get married so he's somehow comparing the two how's uncle clarence which we know what he's calling him, he's calling him uncle tom feeling about overturning loving versus virginia and it's such a weird and dumb ignorant thing to say about a really successful black uh supreme court justice who came from nothing similar i don't know samuel jackson's background but i'm sure he also came from nothing in this great land of america to become somebody so i don't know how he compares this reproductive thing and abortion to interracial couples being able to get married well one of the biggest things that stands out to me is how how for example uh, I love the meme where they got Peter Griffin and it has the shades of your skin tone and it says uh, when you disagree with a Democrat. So basically, <laughs> I seen that. when I disagree with a Democrat, I'm going to get called a coconut, malinche, sellout, uncle, tio Tomas, yada, yada, yada. 
So this is one of their tricks, right? Uh, one of their tricks is the minute somebody like Clarence Thomas does anything that goes against what they want, uh, the goes against the abortion industry, goes against the pharmaceutical industry, goes against the military industrial complex, going against the regime, any of that shit. They have a little tool. It's called Uncle Tom. Yeah. And they just throw it at you. And black folk, I can't wait for y'all to stop following, falling for it in mass. Yeah. I like stop falling for it. It's a weapon used against you to diminish your opinion and your ideas. Like you're basically limited to what you can think. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say like the white liberal, right? Because a lot of white liberals are cool. I have lots of friends that are liberal of all different shades. But like, it seems a little racist to the minute. Oh, a lot of people call Clarence Thomas Uncle Tom because all these white women felt that suddenly it was okay. Not just that. They called him way worse. Yeah, they call him the N-word, coon. All of a sudden, when it has to do with abortion, it's like all bets are off. Um... I think the electrician trying to get in. Rudy, Rudy. Uh, what's up, buddy? Are you at the house? Yeah, uh, no, I'm not at the house, but are you stuck at the gate? Yeah, dude. You can go up at the gate for me, man. All right, I got you right now. I appreciate okay, it, bye. That's another thing that's been f malfunctioning. They had to change the gate code for us, right? Because we live there now. Now that shit don't want to work. Mm. So it's just like so many little headaches. Like rockfin.com forward slash red pill tamales exactly. or patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. What this also helps when we have more of a, of a support from fans directly is that it allowed you, Chingo, to um, make more content outside of the political sphere. Mm -hmm. So if this is a, if the studio now, the now bigger studio, is dedicated to full time content creation, it doesn't have to just be RPT. We can create a ton of RPT content. And, other, and and her lounge, and then maybe this um, financial literacy stuff. Ne that I never miss manning. out. Never miss out on the live stream. Never miss out on cafecito time. Yeah, fin cafecito financial time. Financial literacy. And then also like whatever you want to do that's non political. There's plenty of stuff you yeah. want to talk about and people you want to talk about that have nothing to do with politics. Yeah. And they sh and you should want to and people w do want to like when you post these those clip old clips from um, Chingo Chats. People are like, "Where's this full episode? Where's this full podcast?" Like motherfucker, we did that for like six months. It just sucks that I lost my old. YouTube. So we're just having to start from scratch on a lot of shit. And we already know how hard it is to get people to subscribe to your YouTube once. Yeah. Not to mention another one. You know what I'm saying? So uh it is what it is. Hey, I had a good run. We did we did had we did a good twenty years. Um, you know, you shoot yourself in the foot when you go up against Mark Zuckerberg and Big Tech. Um, but it's all good though. We ain't tripping. Uh next year. Hey, if, you know, I'm not going to a lot of these markets. Yeah. I'm going to work from home. Think about it. Could Chingo Bling have a dog and a puppy for his girls and his kids? Or is he always going to be out of town and saying, who's going to watch my kids and then who's going to watch my dog? Yeah. Like, hey, babysitter, can you watch the dog too? You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I want to be home. Uh, and that's that. And we're going to make it happen. And I'm and and that's one less that's one less job on my part. I'm not gonna have to be spamming y'all talking about Irvine Improv. I'll see you July six, Ontario Improv, July seventh. No, you'll know all this from the podcast. You'll yeah. be podcast listeners, and you'll know exactly where El you're going. Central. Next. For, look, scroll down, brother. Scroll down. L look at this shit. Denver Improv coming soon. Denver Improv. Where are, where is the Chingo Bling ticket link? Considering that it's July fourteenth is when I'm gonna be doing a whole weekend. And this is, uh, you know, this behind the scenes shit that we got to deal with. Uh, I won't have to deal with these headaches. We won't have to deal with it. Um, Where are you going to be next week? Uh, Irvine, California, Irvine Improv, July 6th. Ontario Improv, July 7th. El Centro, California, July 9th. But uh, in, in July, we're also hitting Denver and Oklahoma City. Whatever. For sure. All right, man, send us out. Uh, that is all we have for today. I know we covered a whole bunch of Roe v. Wade. Go check out that movie, Unplanned. Uh, it's very disturbing, but um, you know, I think, I think it's an interesting subject to do a deep dive because it will be a damn shame if you're one of the ladies out there that's like had your pom poms out for for the abortion industry and trying to. I mean, don't get bamboozled. Like. Educate yourself on all the like, OK, are women really going to die if they're not um, have access to a late term abortion? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just educate yourself. Uh, we also covered briefly the uh, the migrants who died, the migrants who unfortunately, man, were in the hands of the wrong people. Um, they were invited into this country, so we don't blame them. Yeah. They saw everybody else on WhatsApp 
sending selfies from, from Ohio. Ya llegamos a Nueva York. You know what I'm saying? Estamos aquí en la capital, güey. Ya llegamos. It's sweet. And uh, it's very unfortunate. Let's see. Let's see what the media does about this. And we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll continue it more in the Discord. Y'all be safe. Have a good week. Puro pinche RPT. Keep sharing the clips. And I'll see you in Irvine, Ontario, and El Centro. Coming soon. Sass.